hello again and I say again because this is part two of the baking oven videos in part one I've shown the basics of the of the oven where the channels go and I did one full burn this time I'm going to be showing um, a, in a little bit more detail how things work and a little bit more advanced way advanced system for for heating it to get the maximum out of it so I will light this and I will document hour by hour how the temperature goes. Um, I'll also document alongside that the temperature outside and the temperature in the room. And then I have a thermometer here, which is measuring the temperature of the brickwork, which is the important thing with this. Okay, let's get going. If you haven't seen part one, then the link is on the screen now. I recommend that you go and watch that first. So why am I showing you two ways to heat this thing? If there is a more efficient way to get more heat out of it, then why is there another way? And there, are, uh, there is an answer to that. Firstly, um, the way that I showed you in part one is great if you're gonna light the baking oven and then go off to work, come back, and you can close the baffles and, and you know you're heated for the next couple of days. But I think the, the more logical reason, the reason I think that they're built this way is that traditional Finnish rye bread once you mix the flour with the rye starter, because they don't use yeast, and mix that, you then leave it to, to stand or prove for five hours. And then you take it out and eat it a bit, and then it proves for another two hours. So you could light the baking oven in the morning, start doing your rye bread dough, and through the course of the day you get that ready and when it's ready to go into the baking oven the baking oven is ready to close and you can just slide it straight in there whereas the method i'm going to show you now takes a little bit longer but it gets the oven hotter so you can cook other things it's not just for baking at that point and it does as a side effect um, get the maximum amount of heat production to to keep the house warmer for longer Okay, so let's get to it. The first thing is that once the fire has really got going, there's a really good fire going, I close the air right the way down. Not completely shut, but pretty close to it. Now, I don't pretend to know why this works, but it must be something to do about the heat moving slower through the brickwork, but it seems to, to mean that the bricks take in heat faster at this initial stage. If you remember from part one, it was an hour and a half before the bricks actually registered any temperature difference. Whereas with this method, after the first hour, the bricks are already showing a nine degree increase. So it's not much, but after the, after the second hour, we're already up to 50. So it just kickstarts the the transfer of the heat into the bricks. Now I know what people are going to say, that by reducing the amount of air going into the nest then I'm creating an inefficient burn in there. I'm sure I can hear the, the voices of the rocket stove people already. But okay, it may be an, an inefficient burn, but at this stage when the fire's roaring and a lot of that heat's going up the chimney, I think what's more important is the efficiency with which the heat sinks into the bricks. And this seems to work, it makes a difference. Now there is the law of diminishing returns involved here and it only seems to make a difference in the first about three hours of burning. So after three hours, I then opened up the, the air to the besser. To the nest. I'm also aware that the less than optimum burn for a few hours means there's going to be more soot and deposits but I'm not worried about that. The, the baking oven has itself six clean out ports which are cleaned regularly and the chimneys are swept twice a year so not an issue.
So it's worth remembering now, as we hit the seven hour mark, that this is the stage when I did the ordinary burn of the baking oven, that the fire was already out and I was ready to close the baffles. In this instance, we're still going and the temperature hit 119 degrees. Now, at seven and a half hours, that went down to 118. So I decided that we'd peaked. So it was time to close the baffles on the baking oven, which I did. Don't worry. It's not as simple as that. I couldn't just close the baffles and leave the fire burning. Uh, let me explain. So the temperature is now at 118. It was at 119, so we've got to the top. And this is where there's the biggest difference with this second method of, of heating this up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the coals that are now in there. And that's all that's there anymore. It's just coals. And I'm going to shut them down the hole in the front left corner of the fire nest. I'll show you that hole. So while I do that, let me explain what's going on. First, I just have to recap something that I went over in the first video. And here we've got a cross section of the baking oven where you can see the firebox or what I call the nest and the channels going up from that, um, which then combine and go across to the right into the wall of the house. And once in the wall of the house, they go down all the way to the floor they go halfway back and then they go up the chimney but as I said in the first video there is a second chimney so all the coals are now down in that hole I now close the bottom chamber off Shut off the air intake. And I think I've just broken the thermometer. And I close the baffles. Now, you're probably thinking you can't close the baffles with carbon monoxide, but let me explain. So down below the firebox, through that port, there is a secondary chamber, and that chamber has its own baffle. So you put the coals down there, close that baffle, and then there is a small channel running from that chamber all the way to that second chimney. It's working, and it's at 126, so the temperature is already going up. And last time I heated it, you will have seen if you saw the first video, that um, once I closed the baffles, the temperature started really going up quickly. And what we've done here is we're getting that bump in heat right when the baking oven is at its hottest. And that's just when those coals are like that. So we're at 135 degrees there. It's about five minutes since I put everything down below. So in the first video, I showed the drawing of the baking oven and where the nest, the fire nest is. But below that, there's a secondary chamber. There's a chamber under here. And that 
hole in the front left of the nest goes down there. It has its own baffle. So you open the baffle, put all the coals down there, and then close it. Now the reason that's not a problem with the carbon monoxide, this has its own clearing out port here, is that this bottom chamber has its own channel which links up to the second chimney at the back of the, the baking oven. Now the standard size of the flue or chimney here in Finland, they're all this size, is half a brick. The channel that goes from this bottom chamber is a little bit less than a third of a brick. It's a tiny little channel. But at this stage, when it's just coals, it's not giving off lots of lots of smoke and, and gases and stuff. Like in the middle of the burn, it needs that big chimney to get all the stuff moving. When it's down to coals, there's not much coming off. So that little chimney is enough. And so the coals come down here, they continue to give out heat and start heating this the bottom of the baking oven. And the carbon monoxide is getting drawn off through that second chimney which allows the whole baking oven to really start start um, sucking all the heat out of the gases that are now trapped in this top area. And we managed to do that, because of this, we managed to do that at the point when the, 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 where everything is at its hottest. So with both the method shown in the first video and the one second shown in the second video, we ended up closing the baffles off at the about the seven hour mark. But the difference is with the second method, we can then cook at a much higher temperature and the house is going to stay hot for a lot longer. Now, if you weren't going to cook, there is a second method to do this. Um, to be honest, I don't use the method, but I'll let you know just so, so that you know. You may have noticed that when I close, close the baffles, there are two baffles. And I close the baffles. Now the lower baffle has a hole in it. And that means that once you got to that seven hour mark and you judged that, the, that the, you'd hit the top temperature, you could close that lower baffle and again, you're left with a little hole that where the carbon monoxide is going to get drawn up. I don't use it because I'm a bit paranoid about the carbon monoxide. Obviously, I've got a carbon monoxide detector, but that's just a method I don't use. And so it continued. The temperature, the brick temperature on the baking oven gradually drops, but the room temperature stays pretty even. Do bear in mind, this is the temperature of the bricks on the brick oven, um, not the oven itself, which is significantly hotter. And here we've got a good point of reference. The temperature at 24 hours in the first video was 90 degrees. And using this method, we're at 110. Now I had to stop monitoring temperatures once we got to the 48 hour mark. In the first video, in the simple method at the 48 hour marks, I think it was around about 40 degrees that we got to. Now the reason I had to stop this time at 48 hours is that in a couple of days time we're expecting temperatures outside to go down to about minus 23 degrees, which is minus 9.4 Fahrenheit. So I'm going to have to heat up a couple of the other fireplaces in the house to get the house warmed up ready for that. Now interesting, one of the other fireplaces that I'm going to be heating up is this one. And this is a really interesting one. In fact, it's interesting enough that I think I might have to do a video on it. 
it's effectively a kind of a rocket stove. But what the rocket stove people will find interesting is that it seems that rocket stoves, rocket stoves did not arise in the 1980s because these ones were being built in Russia in the late 1800s. So if you think that might be of interest to you, then please subscribe and you'll get a notification when I post new videos and new projects. Thanks for watching and I really hope that this information helps somebody.